right friends welcome back to why and how for 13th week the first one is central public sector enterprise exchange traded fund is a fast to becoming a popular revenue for investments by both the retail and the institutional investors here two things may be difficult to understand what is the difference between retail investments and institutional investments in stock markets retail investors or the investors like you and me who make small value investments normally the investments up to rupees 2 lakh are classified as retail investors and the meaning of institutional investors is the institutions like pension funds insurance funds they invest in stock market so institutional investors are basically the big investors and institutional investors can be two types one is domestic investors like lic lic is one domestic institutional investor which invests in stock market and foreign investments or you can say foreign portfolio investors or you can say foreign institutional investors they are the investments into indian stock market from the foreign land now foreign institutional investors are known as foreign portfolio investors so institutional investments means the investments by big institutions they have to register with the sebi so the doubt between retail investors and institutional investors is clear to you second one is exchange traded fund the exchange traded fund is known as a derivative instrument it derivates its value from the underlying shares it has got the component of various shares that means it is composed of various underlying shares and based on the percentage of shares in various companies like ntpc bhcl coal india bharat electronics then the index is decided when these shares perform well the index will increase if the shares perform poorly the index will be reduced so it is the mechanism to minimize risk or you can say it is a diversified instrument right so we learned about exchange traded fund at the same time retail investors institutional investors remaining things please go through this slide india is going to join tir convention of the united nations what is this tir convention this tir convention is international road transport convention please look into this picture here sealed containers are seen these are sealed containers if they are crossing land boundary of one country to other country if they are crossing from land boundary of one country to other country they will be allowed to pass without customs checks so the delays at country's borders will be minimized that is the beauty of this international transport convention now union cabinet gave approval for joining tir convention so please don't forget tir convention is the convention which permits customs sealed vehicles and containers to transit nations that means to cross boundaries without them being generally inspected at border crossings so the transit time will be reduced and the customs checks will not be there and the delays at the border points will not be there or will be minimized right look into the next one 5g is expected to be rolled out in the developed nations by around 2020 and by 2022 in india so fifth the generation so what will happen after this fifth generation technology comes to our country by 2022 it is going to bring revolutionary changes one is 
internet of things by sitting in your office you can control the environment in your house or somewhere else artificial intelligence then smart agriculture at the same time intelligent transportation system these are going to become reality once this 5g comes into place right so this will bring revolutionary changes even in the systems of diagnosis and treatment of human beings right so it is going to have revolutionary changes in most of the spheres and please look into this slide 1g 1g is analog communication starting from 2g it is a digital please look into this 1g is analog analog means information is translated into electric pulses of varying amplitude like this and 2g onwards it is a digital in digital technology what happens translation of information is in binary format where each bit is representative of two distinct amplitudes so from 2g onwards we are into digital technology 1g is analog and please look into this the differences between 1g 2g 3g 4g basically 4g is high speed mobile broadband and we are into this phase future is going to be 5g so after 5g transformation will take place it will lead to revolutionary changes like intelligent transportation internet of things then at the same time it will lead to transformation in the diagnosis and treatment of human beings also in medical field right friends look at the next one angel investments are quite frequently in the news angel investments and venture capital you should have a clear differentiation angel investments are typically very early stage startups some of these companies are you can say the investments will be made in these companies at pre revenue stage also and most of these companies were found by first time entrepreneurs and look into this this is the difference between angel investment and venture capital angel investment is for early stage startups and venture capital is basically for the startups after assessing high growth potential right so nowadays angel investment as well as venture capital are the buzzwords and please don't forget government formulated fund of funds for supporting startup companies right so venture capital is going to be invested through fund of funds route in startups right friends about 85% of country's sewage waste goes into water bodies untreated unfortunate aspect is the country has sewage treatment capacity of just 30% india has got sewage treatment capacity of just 30% and 50% of it is not working so in a nutshell if you calculate overall 85% of the country's sewage goes into water bodies untreated this is as stated by the minister for environment at the same time every year 7 crore tons of waste is generated 7 crore tons or you can say 70 million tons of waste is generated that means every day 2 lakh tons is generated and it comprises e waste hazardous biomedical construction and demolition waste so this is sewage treatment that is to be taken up on war footing and second important point is disposal of waste please look into this waste can be bifurcated into biodegradable this is vegetable waste you can say example non biodegradable various types of plastics then hazardous then inert like building rubble 
so waste can be bifurcated into these many types and india needs immediately plans for sewage treatment as well as proper disposal of waste look into the next issue india plans to eliminate tuberculosis by 2025 and every year 4 lakh 80000 lives in fact this is the figure for 2016 4 lakh 80000 lives were lost in 2016 and india has over 3 million tb patients and constitute 27% of the world burden so 27% of world's tb patients are in india so if you want more please listen to the news capsule for 13th week which we are going to present tb by 2025 look into the next one a total of 956 jan aushadhi stores have been opened across the country for what purpose these are meant for this jan aushadhi stores please don't forget pradhan mantri jan aushadhi yojana is there for what purpose they are intended for please look into this slide they are intended for generic medicines at present most of the medicines what we are using are branded medicines branded medicines normally cost 3 to 4 times in comparison to generic medicines and generic medicines are bio equivalent to a brand name drug in usage or you can say if you equal it in dosage strength quality performance it is bio equivalent to brand name drug there is no change and in most of the cases these generic products are available once the patent protections for the original developer have expired once a new drug is found or invented then it will have patent protection for some years once that is exhausted in most of the cases there are some exceptions i am not talking about those exceptions but in most of the cases these generic products are available once the patent protection afforded to the original developer have expired so to promote generic medicines this pm jan aushadhi yojana is intended and this is undertaken by the bureau of pharma ps use of india this is undertaken by the bureau of pharma ps use of india in collaboration with the state governments so if someone talks about pm jan aushadhi yojana basically this is for providing generic medicines at affordable costs to the general public of the country look into the next one the competition commission of india has asked for filing of fresh application with respect to german major bayer's proposed 66 billion dollar buyout of monsanto and competition commission of india comes into picture competition commission of india this is the fair trade regulator in our country it comes into the picture to look at the mergers and acquisitions which are taking place will violate the principle of a fair trade or not so to see whether the fair trade is violated or not this competition commission of india will come into picture it will come into the picture for bigger deals not for all so here bayer is purchasing monsanto so bayer is a germany based company and monsanto is a usa based company and with the purchase of monsanto by bayer whether the fair trade or competition will be affected or not whether monopolies will be created or not these aspects will be looked after by competition commission of india which is fair trade regulator right so please look into this bayer's products monsanto's products look into the next one as per the information given in parliament 3355 missing or cited children cases were closed on the portal of koyapaya what is koyapaya 
Koya Paya is basically to track the missing and found children. Basically to track the missing children and at the same time found children. This is intended for and this information was given in reply to a parliamentary question. So, if someone talks about the Koya Paya, this is intended for missing children and sighted children. Look into the next one. World Health Organization recently released a report. The name of the report is Depression and Other Common Mental Disorders Global Health Estimates. Here, 4.5 percent of the total population in India are affected by depressive disorders. 4.5 percent of the population in India are affected by depressive disorders and recently central government has undertaken a national mental health survey in 12 states and as per the survey the prevalence of depressive disorders in India is a 2.7 percent but the World Health Organization report says 4.5 percent of the total population are affected by depressive disorders in India. Ilai Raja has sent a legal notice to S.P. Balasubramaniam and his co-singers for performing his compositions and copyright act is there and please don't forget some amendments were made in copyright act in 2012 prior to that the copyrights rests only with the producers but now after the amendments the rights rests with not only the lyricists as well as music composers but also producers. So, as per copyright act, the copyrights for the songs rests with lyricists who penned the song at the same time, music composers at the same time, producers. Right? Please understand this. Look into the next one. The Supreme Court directed high courts to install CCTV cameras inside courtrooms in two districts of every state and union territory within three months. Basically, to improve transparency and better case management and at the same time to improve public behavior, this decision was taken. SpaceX became the first one to launch a satellite into orbit by using reusable rocket. Please understand, satellite was put into orbit by using reused rocket or you can say a satellite was launched into orbit by reflying, by reflying one of the boosters, it recovered from the past missions. So, this uh, in fact heralds a new era of reusable rockets in the world. So, please don't forget the name of the rocket is Falcon 9. SpaceX is the organization in United States of America and this is the first one to launch satellites into orbit and Falcon 9 is its rocket and the person behind it is Elon Musk, please don't forget. And at the same time, please recollect our reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrator of ISRO is the baby step in this direction. So, in India also last year, this reusable launch vehicle Technology demonstrator experiment was conducted by ISRO. This is the step in that direction. So, from examination perspective, please don't forget this reusable rocket launcher was devised by SpaceX, promoted by Elon Musk in USA. Look into the next one. Punjab Agricultural University has announced that it has developed the country's first genetically modified varieties of cotton. So far, we are purchasing genetically modified varieties of cotton manufactured by Monsanto. And here, Punjab Agricultural University developed genetically modified varieties of cotton and 
if you look at further information all the three varieties carry one particular gene which is resistant to bollworm and the genetic modification involves introduction of bt bacterial gene basically it kills the bollworm right so farmers can keep their own harvest for next year's sowing and they need not purchase costly cotton seeds every year at present cotton is the only gm crop allowed to be cultivated in our country and as the seeds are reusable the price of these varieties will be much lesser in comparison to the current bt cotton hybrid seeds so it will reduce the cultivation cost please understand look into the next one before going ahead what is the genetic modification genetic modification is basically the manipulation of the organism's genome by using biotechnology so here transfer of genes will take place to provide here transfer of genes will take place to produce improved organisms here some pieces of dna of one organism will be cut and they will be introduced into the dna of another organism please don't forget dna is deoxyribonucleic acid and it is the material inside the nucleus of cells carrying genetic information right look into the next one there is going to be a record ever production of wheat for 2016 17 if the estimates come true and we harvest it record ever production of wheat in 2013 14 at the time 95.85 million tons and this year it is expected to be 96.64 million tons it is expected to be the record ever wheat crop and the biggest worry is the rates are falling please look into this for wheat recently government imposed 10% import duty and recently government allowed duty free import of sugar when you are importing sugar there will not be any import duty but when you are importing wheat 10% import duty is allowed why this paradox the paradox is wheat rates are falling and to protect the domestic interests to prevent further slide in wheat prices government to protect domestic farmers imposed 10% import duty on wheat so as to make imports costlier and to prevent further fall in prices and you see the case of sugar sugar prices are increasing in recent times this year the production is around 20 million tons our requirement is 24 million tons we may survive because of inventory of last year but now the sugar prices are increasing so as to reduce the prices of sugar government allowed duty free import of sugar so please understand this paradox whenever domestic prices are falling whenever indian farmers are to be protected from the fall in prices government resort to imposition of import duty at the same time when the prices are raising in the domestic market so as to get the imports from other countries government will resort to reduction in import duties as the case with the sugar look into the next one supreme court ordered a freeze on the registration and sale of bs3 fuel compliant vehicles from 1st april 2017 literally bs4 came into force and the vehicle manufacturers what they will do with 8.2 lakh bs3 vehicles is better known to them because this decision was known in advance why they have manufactured so many vehicles with bs3 that is not understandable i have listed here salient features 
about this Bharat stage norms. They are based on European standards. Please go through them. And we are going to switch over to BS6 from 1st April 2020. Here, both oil refining companies have to invest for upgrading their infrastructure to produce cleaner fuel. And at the same time, vehicle manufacturers also require to invest to manufacture better vehicles so as to take clean fuel. Right, then petrol emissions with the upgradation to BS4 emissions will reduce. If you are using diesel vehicles, please go through this slide how the emissions will reduce. A new mental health care bill was passed by the Lok Sabha, and here it decriminalizes act of suicide. Previously, attempted suicide was punishable, but now attempted suicide is not punishable so it is a decriminalized attempted suicide then another important aspect is it prohibits electroconvulsive therapy on the mentally affected patients for minors and at the same time in adults also this electroconvulsive therapy can be given only after the use of anesthesia or muscle relaxants. Then the bill also restricts medical institutions from chaining the patients. Patients cannot be kept with the chains from now onwards. And mentally ill person shall have the right to make an advance directive to the states how he or she wants to be treated and who will be his or her nominative representative. And it prohibits sterilization at any stage of treatment and it restores property rights of mentally ill persons. So, these are important changes as per this mental health care bill. Donald Trump administration is abandoning the clean power plan the clean power plan, just like Obamacare in health sector, is the brainchild of Barack Obama. And Donald Trump does not believe in climate change. Now, he is not bothering much about the clean power plan of Barack Obama. And please go through the remaining points I have given here. Now, the point to note is Donald Trump is going to bury the clean power plan of Barack Obama. That is the important point. So, the switch over from fossil fuel related power plants to renewable energy based power plants in America, how Donald Trump will view in future? It is million dollar question. Central government through amendments to finance bill removed 7.5 percent limit of the last three years profits for giving donations to political parties from next year. Prior to April 1, 2017, there are three conditions I have listed here. Companies prior to April 1 can donate only up to 7.5 percent of the profits and at the same time names of the political parties also required to be given from April 1 onwards, this ceiling of 7.5 percent has been dropped and at the same time, they are not required to reveal the name of the political parties. So, there is an apprehension that it may lead to proliferation of shell companies only to support the political parties. National Green Tribunal placed in abeyance the environmental clearance given to proposed neutrino observatory. This is coming up in the Thani district of Tamil Nadu in Bodhi West Hills. This is close to Kerala border and at the same time it is within 5 kilometers of this Mathiketan Shola National Park in Idukki district of Kerala. So, as per the guidelines, if the project falls within 5 kilometers from the interstate boundary or within a notified national park or sanctuary, 
stringent norms will apply and it is to be treated as a category A project. So, it involves more number of processes. Right? These two scientists in 2015 got the Nobel Prize because they proved that neutrinos have got mass. So, if someone is talking about neutrinos, they are the fundamental particles which make up the universe. Two important points, please do not forget. One is neutrinos are electrically neutral. That is one important point. Second important point is neutrinos have got mass which was proved recently based on which they got Nobel Prize in Physics. Right? So, this neutrino observatory is the brainchild of APJ Abdul Kalam expected to come up in Thane district of Tamil Nadu. At the same time, please do not forget, LIGO project is expected to come up in Maharashtra. A place was selected in Maharashtra. Look into the last one. India is going to redefine blindness and it will be aligned with WHO criteria. So, so far in India, a person unable to count fingers from a distance of 6 meters is categorized as blind, whereas World Health Organization's stipulation is 3 meters. So, now, India's rules and regulations will be aligned with that of World Health Organization. So, friends, let us call it a day for today. Please do join for other capsules and editorial discussions. Have a nice day. Thank you.